Hey everyone and welcome back to another video with me Gav. This is going to be a kit review of the Sword 172nd Harrier T Mark II slash 2A uh, which can also be built as a TAV8A I believe. This was originally a limited edition kit which I believe uh, actually then was put into production again because uh, there was customer demand for it. Because as far as I know they are the only kits available for the Harrier T2 which was the trainer two seat trainer variant of the Harrier GR1. They also offer a boxing of the Harrier T Mark IV which is essentially the same aircraft uh, but it basically had the same modifications on it that the GR3 had over the GR1 namely the different shaped nose with the laser designator in it and it had a uh, different uh, had some an extra aerial kind of lump on the on the tail with the main things I think they had some uprated engines as well but generally speaking they were relatively similar and obviously just general avionics improvements so they also offer boxing for that however in terms of this the parts for the GR well the T4 variant are actually included in the kit so it's a case of the kits are identical within each box you, the only difference being the instructions and the decals so let's have a look in the kit what do you get um, now it's a slightly multimedia kit, uh, being a limited edition. I paid fourteen pounds for it, which I don't think is too bad a price. It's at some par with what Airfix charged for their their um, new GR7/9 kit. Uh, this one, in terms of fitting things, I believe is not on par with that. However, it does have recessed details, and the de level of detail is quite nice, and it's enhanced with a few little extras that come in the kit which for this price there is actually not bad at all. So first things first, Sword I believe are a Czech company and I have a funny feeling they have some kind of connection with Edward who are also Czech. Um, and I say this because the, well it doesn't say it on it, the photo etch that's included in this kit is exactly the same as what you get with an Edward kit. The font and everything is the same, it doesn't say Edward and it's also made in Czech Republic so I imagine, <clears throat> I imagine this is possibly made by Edward. Anyway, what do we get? We get mainly parts for the cockpit, um, instrument panels, side panels, um, and then a whole host of little details which um, enhance the detail on the bang seats. So you've got uh, the actual back, the back cushion, uh, seat belts, lap belt, uh, ejection handles up here, um, little the canopy breaker and, and things that's going, uh, that go on the top and various other little details. Um, they're coloured which is really nice so that will enhance the cockpit considerably considering uh, other than that it's quite basic. We also get some various other external sensors. <clears throat> Windscreen wiper, uh, aerial, the little, win little weather vane thing that goes in the front, a couple of blade antennas and such like. We also get a resin air brake well um, Presumably it was beyond their means to mould this with this detail in plastic. It's now possible because the new Airfix kits have theirs moulded in plastic. Um, however, it's a nice little touch that is there. Canopy seems quite clear. It's not marked. Um, I'll probably position mine open anyway just so you can see the detail inside the cockpit, so that looks quite nice. Um, luckily there's just one sprue mounting point, no mouldings down them or anything. So that's not too bad. Then we got into the kit itself, this one half seems to be loose. So the fuselage, normal split down the length of the fuselage. Quite a few sprue mount points. Um, sprue gates are relatively wide but no worse than Airfix. A uh, bit of flash, bit of burring, but nothing that won't clear up. Nicely recessed panel lines, in some cases a little bit too fine, especially on the front here. There are, the plastic's a little bit rough here, but a little sand will take that down. And yeah, I think what I'll probably do is possibly just run a scriber over some of these panel lines to deepen them a little bit. Uh, some of them seem a little bit a little bit dainty that under a coat of paint and a wash they might not quite hold wash enough, just um just with that. So there's two of the halves. Sorry for this. Still using my phone. <laughs> uh, here we have the cockpit tubs. Uh, throttle quadrants are moulded in. 
um, as are some very basic stumps for the pedals. However, there are brass replacements for well, black brass detail pedals that go on top of those, and a bit of brass that will detail that up. But once the ejection seats in, the cockpits are small and higher, so once the ejection seats in, you'll not see much anyway. So. Uh, here are the ejection seats, as you can see, quite plain, but again, with the with the additional photo etch, they should turn up quite nicely. Uh, I believe this is the inside of the front wheel well. Um, Pito tube is a little bit thick and chunky. There's quite a lot of flash on here, but it should clean up quite nicely. Um, joysticks, combing, the normal in the instrument panels, um, but again, there's photo etch for those, so once all... That's done, that should be quite nice. Landing gear. Can't remember now. Yes, yes the the nose gear there. So the nose gear here is one piece, but the ex the other arm is separate. So that means there's no night there's no ugly seam line to try and clean up down the middle of the landing gear which is quite nice. The outriggers are also molded as, as one as well, that's quite nice so they're cleaned up they should look okay. Um, here we have some drop tanks, under belly cannon pods, pylons, uh, nice touch is that the exhaust nozzles are all molded as one piece so no seam lines to clean up there. What we have here is the GR3 spec, well in this case the T4 spec nose and the T2 spec nose. The one I'm doing in this kit, I think I'll do the T2 first. I do intend to get the T4 boxing as well at some point. So, And very quickly the last sprue, main wing section, bit of flash, but nothing that can't be cleaned up. Underwings, tail, uh, elevator, sorry. And three tail options, and that's because you can do a T2, a T2 Mark A, or a G, or the T4. So this is the T4's tail, and you've got the shorter T2 spec tail, and then, but that didn't last very long before they extended it. So I'll do the extended version, which was the most common. Um, basically, the tail shape is more or less the same, except it had a taller. The tail is taller, um, presumably to help counteract the extra weight of, you know, an extended cockpit and such. Fan is quite nicely detailed. Apparently, this is where there's some fit issues with this section here, the the inside of the intakes and the fan. And that's mainly, but apparently, putting each half into each half of the body bef instead of putting it together as one unit and trying to trap it between the halves works a lot better, um, because then any gap you get is actually hidden within the fuselage and you won't see it, rather than then. There being gaps at the the edges because the the part's too small or doesn't fit properly. One disadvantage is that the in the extra inlet intake doors, which are quite a prominent feature on the Harrier, around the outside of the main intakes, are molded on and they're molded in the closed position. Uh, any Harriers on the ground will always have that open because as soon as you put it into hover mode or or land, those doors automatically open, and they stay open until you transition back to horizontal flight. Um, Apparently they're not too hard to remove and then replicate uh, open ones with a bit of uh, plastic art, so I may give that a go. Decor sheet looks really nice, it kind of looks almost on par with kind of cartograph. It's apparently, although I've just noticed that there's actually some, I'm going to have to put this in a bag because actually the, f the sprue has scratched two bits of the decals off, that's a bit of a pain. Um, so I'm going to put that in a separate bag or hide it within the instructions so that it doesn't happen again. You get markings for an American Marines aircraft um, and two RAF squadron markings, so quite a few markings. Um, and all printed nicely, all in register, not much carrier film, and generally not too bad. A bit pissed off about that actually though. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a pain. A little bit of pain will touch that up though, because I plan on doing it as an RAF version. So that's that. Instructions are very similar to Edward. Uh, smaller booklet. Um, clearly labelled where you're using photo etch and things. As you see, most of it's for the cockpit and the seats. Um, but the seats should detail up nicely with the photo etch. Oh, I forgot to mention. There is actually sidewall detail as well, that's a nice touch. So the cockpit should actually paint up quite nicely on this. 
just have a quick look through here. It just kind of builds up as as a lot of Harriers do, which is um, fuselages, halves together, wings on, tail on, ta elevators on, undercarriage in, weapons on. I don't think I'm going to bother putting the cannon pods on. I think I'll just put the underwing, the under fuselage strakes on instead. Um, I think the two GR1 and the GR3 <clears throat> recently with the pods on, and yeah, I'm not a bit bored of that now. Stencil data, uh, stencil data. Here we have one of the key. So they're basically dark green, dark sea grey, light aircraft grey, the same as my. In fact, all three are the same, so they'll be painted in the same way as my GR1 and GR3. So as I said, I plan on getting the T4 as well. I'll not bother reviewing that if I get it because it's just going to be the same kit as this, just slightly different decals and uh, different markings in the instructions. But that is my review of the limited edition. Sword Harrier T Mark II and 172nd scale, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye now.